The Alaska Dispatch buried under the weight of unpaid bills into the millions. New buyers have come to the rescue, but can they dig the dispatch out of so much debt? Sometimes old things need to die so new things can be born, and I hate to think that's the case. And if it is, what's at stake for Alaskans? I would really miss having a newspaper in the morning. A lot of news that should get out won't get out. Ahead, Alaska's largest newspaper on the brink. Sponsorship for Frontiers with Rhonda McBride is provided by your local Alaska Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Alaska, where there are old triumphs, but also new frontiers. With challenges as great as the state itself, but a belief the best is yet to come. Bringing you the faces, the places, and the spirit of the last frontier. This is Frontiers with Rhonda McBride. Welcome to our program. The Alaska Dispatch was a personal frontier for Alice Rogoff, who hoped to blaze new trails, only to have taken the newspaper to the brink. Revelations in federal bankruptcy court this week have come as a shock to many Alaskans. This week, the court began to untangle a complicated web of finances to clear the way for new owners, the Binkley family of Fairbanks and Jason Evans, who owns three rural newspapers. They've offered a million dollars to buy the dispatch to keep it afloat. After negotiations with other potential buyers fell through, this deal was crafted in an attempt to save the paper. And what's at stake is the continuation of of the newspaper. I mean, this was a do or die hearing. That hearing was continued until Friday afternoon, and we record Frontiers on Friday morning, so it's possible there may be some major developments that we won't be covering in this show, so be sure and check out our website, ktva.com, for the latest. Well, trends in the newspaper industry have worked against the Alaska Dispatch. The loyal core of readers who subscribe to a printed version of the newspaper is aging and shrinking. It is what it is, it's a sign of the times. The internet highway has become just as important as those that carry cars. As for newspapers. We like this place because the people are normal. Normal in that most customers like to read a newspaper the old fashioned way. But there's a new normal that Mary Janice and her husband Burton reject. Because we don't use social media. We don't use it. We think it's ridiculous. Ridiculous or not, many of the customers here worry they may soon lose their cherished good morning habit. Besides wrapping fish, it's a handy thing to have around. Dave McKay has read about the Alaska Dispatch's growing mountain of debt and wonders if the paper can survive. I think it's really sad. I think that a city this size should have at least one paper newspaper. I understand the competition from the electronic media, but uh, it's still nice to hold it in your hands. It's delicious, and I know it's going to be wonderful. Like biscuits and gravy, the newspaper is a mainstay of Catherine Rosso's daily diet. I read the paper for the comics, the horoscope, the crossword puzzle. She says the printed paper draws her into stories she might not otherwise read. What would be the loss to the state if, if we didn't have a, a strong statewide paper? A community voice, a community sense of, uh, of happenings. The problem is fewer and fewer people want to pay for a paper. So what do you see in the crystal ball for the right. dispatch? I, I have no crystal ball. Craig Medred has spent most of his career as a print journalist and joined the Alaska Dispatch team when it first launched as an online-only publication. It's so changed from the journalism I grew up with that some days I get up and turn my computer on and hardly recognize it. Today, he has his own media website. So far, it's not a money maker, but his bet is on the digital delivery of news. Sometimes old things need to die so new things can be born, and I hate to think that's the case. Coffee shops across the state are the incubators of the brave new world. We're 
you see a blended approach to daily news consumption. Some still read hard copy, but others like Sam Satry hardly ever do. Isn't it wonderful though to have something all spread out in front of you to be pouring through rather than hunkered down in a tiny phone? Um, I think because people spend so much time on their phones already, it becomes a natural state versus opening up a big newspaper. I've liked it and followed it, so it'll have... Sam also likes the multimedia component, like this story about a white moose spotted in Sweden. And Sam says videos like this one help to distinguish between real and fake news. So it's kind of getting spun the other way now. As a kid, Sam read the paper a lot. He and his mom, Linda, would talk about the stories. There's nothing better than sitting down and reading a Sunday New York Times at a coffee shop. To me, that's nirvana. But Linda Satry also partakes of the newspaper's digital offerings. They put it out as a podcast also. Linda says she sends her son links to articles to stay in touch. Mother and son may walk in different worlds, but like a lot of Alaskans, they're headed in the same direction towards the ever-expanding digital horizon. Up next, what pushed the Alaska Dispatch to the brink? Good intentions are very dangerous. Alice Rogoff came to Alaska with big dreams and big money. How did her newspaper turn into such a financial nightmare? <laughs>